Hello again. Okay, today I'm going to talk about my second book, Multiversal, which is on the screen behind me. I'm going to read uh, some stuff from it and talk about it. Uh, I was going to do more stuff from the first book, but I just want to talk about what interests me at any particular time. So this is what, been, has, what is what has been coming up for me recently and what I wanted to talk about. It's regarding the image you see on the front cover. A big turning point in my experience and the revealing of everything about what I am, who I am, where I'm from, before I was uh, a human, so before my sentient consciousness came into this vessel. So it's quite a big, it's got quite a big scope. It's quite a wide subject in a way. And it really is the the main purpose of the second book. And there have been experiences since that, since my discovery of who I really am. So I'm going to read from the book and then go from there. And we'll see where it goes and how we go with it. Where I want to go with it. It's kind of skipping ahead, you know, I wanted to go through more of the first book and experiences in there and then jump into the second book because it's, it's like a multiversal series, that's what I've called the books because the first one starts from when I first saw a UFO when I was 12 and goes all the way up to uh, 2010 basically. And then in 2018 uh, things changed a lot for me and that's start of the second book. Yeah, this is kind of a big one. So let's just see how it goes. Let's see where I go with it. I may waffle on a bit. I'm not sure what I'm going to say and I'll make some cuts <laughs> in the video. So you may see it cut a bit. But anyway, let's go. Let's get the glasses on for this. Do a bit of reading. And let's jump straight in. It's page 57. And what I've titled it is Discovering Who I Really Am and our place in the multiverse. Hence the title of the book, Multiversal. At the beginning of the book, I do go over my, my initial encounter and some other things, some bits that you would see in the first book, because this has to be a standalone book on its own as well. I have to have a bit of background before I jump into the main event, as it were. And then we'll go on from there. So it's kind of a spoiler alert. For the second book. But I'm not going to read all of the book because I like people to buy the book and read it themselves, have the time to. I mean it takes some time to understand all the concepts because I think I'm going to go through a lot of concepts about the universe and the multiverse and the structure of, of the universe and the multiverse and where our place is within that as humans and where other beings and aliens are in that, in the multiverse and the universe as well. So let's start with this. We're going to start at 2018. Are you ready? Strap yourself in. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> so discovering who I really am and our place in the multiverse. Early 2018, I had a bad cold or flu and not sleeping very well. This was in early or late January of 2018 and whilst I was in an in-between state but conscious, in a state rather like a meditation, a vision opened up in front of my mind's eye. Now I'm just adding here, I'm, ad I'm going to ad lib as I go along. <laughs> this uh, state, the in-between state uh, is quite common for me, isn't it? If uh, I think I mentioned it before in other videos, but uh, in, in experiences I had in the monastery, where I had these shamanic type experiences and all kinds of things were happening, and it's always in that in between state. So again, I was in this in between state, and this was like a door was opened for me and for access from for other consciousnesses to contact me, etc. 
So I was in this rather meditation-like state. A vision opened up in front of my mind's eye. It was a swirling tunnel with gold and black colours. The tunnel sides were mainly gold, with black interwoven between the gold, swirling around like the tunnel was made of liquid, with the gold and black moving about in it. A bit like when you see fuel or oil swirling around on the surface of water, as you might see on the road sometimes, when there's, it's just a little bit of rain, a little bit of dew in the morning, and it just rises, raises the grease and stuff off from the road onto the surface, and you get that multicoloured shimmering effect. As I was looking at the tunnel, I noticed a line of small links, which looked rather like bubbles, going off in a straight line down the tunnel, disappearing into its depths. I'll add pictures on this video and I'll stick them on probably up to my up to my right there. If the pictures that I have that I've drawn or whatever. Excuse my drawing sometimes they're not so good. I'm not too bad at drawing but some of the drawings I do are, are not as as good as I'd like them to be. So it will help you to uh, understand what I'm talking about. So this small line of links, which looked rather like bubbles, going off in a straight line down the tunnel, disappearing into its depths. I was surprised at this and wondered what they could be. On consideration, I thought that perhaps it is the link between me and my body, a bit like the silver cord that mystics speak of in the context of dying or near-death experiences. The silver cord is also mentioned in the Bible. I found this quote in the Bible. I don't know how I came across it. I actually don't have a copy of the Bible. I did read it before when I was trying on my search for understanding everything. I had read the Bible, but I couldn't make a lot of sense of some, or a lot of it. But anyway, and this quote goes, Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed. The silver cord, you see, before it's loosed. In other words, before... Remember your creator before the silver cord is cut, you know, from your body. Which means when the silver cord is gone, you're, you're dying, you're dead, and you're going off. So remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken. The golden bowl, I think they refer to as your head. That's what they mean in this particular case. Or the pitcher shattered at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the well. So this is to do with the body and everything, and you being a living physical being. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, because your body dissolves and goes back to the earth. Right? And the spirit will return to God who gave it. Ecclesiastes 12, 6, 7. This is a, a typical indicator actually of the Bible of things that I found difficult to understand back in the day when I was reading it, trying to see if I can make any sense of it, it would help me at all but someone else had already deciphered this passage. I must have found it relating to near-death experiences, etc., and mentioned in the Bible. So a lot of people who are religious, you know, and uh, read the Bible, they will like that. And uh, it's good that it's been mentioned in the Bible. It's not just new age people and that sort of thing who, who are talking about this sort of thing. It was mentioned all the way back in the time of Christ, you know, the Bible, etc., and they mentioned the silver cord, which is quite interesting. It's not a line of bubbles, like I was saying, but I, I thought that the line of bubbles perhaps was like the silver cord, but I don't think it is, actually. But that was my idea at the time. But it might be something else, but we can get to that and talk about that, if I remember. Back to the book. I watched this scene, taking it all in for probably only a moment or two. Because all those moments and these sort of events seem to take forever. But when you think about it, when I thought about it, it was all quite quick, really. This, when you have to explain it and discuss it, it takes a lot longer than to experience. Some things have to be experienced. And talking about them is difficult, so you have to find the right words to bring the feeling and describe the moments, etc. Which is quite interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> That's what I found with a lot of spiritual experiences or psychic, or paranormal, or whatever you want to call it. So I watched this scene, taking it in for a moment or two, and I heard a voice say, do you want to go? 
I paused for a moment, recognising the voice as sounding like my own, but sounded like my own voice in my own head. I didn't say that deliberately, it just came. Do I want to go? And then I replied, yeah, but it looked really interesting, this tunnel. It didn't, I mean, I've had a scene and experienced a lot of weird and maybe scary things for a lot of people, but so this wasn't really a scary thing for me. It was just really fascinating. I didn't feel at all scared or worried. And I was really intrigued by, by this tunnel. So after I said, yeah, then all of a sudden, I took off down this tunnel at some speed. I felt like I was literally being pulled through this vortex-like tunnel, body and all, as I felt the forces on my body as I whooshed around from left to right. So it's literally as a tunnel twisted and turned. So I literally felt like my whole body, like I'd, I'd gone with my whole body down this tunnel. I had that feeling. It was just real. I just felt all the forces so I was being thrown from left to right around the turns. Really, really interesting. Eventually, I came to the end of my ride and I was in what I perceived as the inside of an aeroplane or craft of some sort, as it was very wide, like 20 to 30 feet wide, so much bigger than a normal aeroplane. There were these seats and people milling about, all sorts of people, old, young, men, women, and different cultures. I remember there was a black man sitting down in front of me, leaning forward with his elbows resting on his knees, looking like he had been waiting for ages. I was standing, apparently, looking around, because I was looking down at this guy who was leaning with his elbows on his knees in front of me like this, and I was looking around the craft. So I didn't see my body, but I felt like I was standing. Not that I probably had a body. This is all taking place in another place, if you like. This is all consciousness. They all seemed to be human looking, like myself. And then I heard the voice again. It said, Do you want to see what you look like? I paused for a moment, thinking what a strange question it was. It does seem rather odd, doesn't it? I want to know what I look like. In other words, I don't look like what I think I look like. So I had no idea what that would be. But then I decided it sounded rather intriguing and said, yes. Then as I was looking ahead of myself, the space directly in front of me started to fold in on itself, a bit like water gushing down a plug hole, but without the circling around. It was like space itself that was folding in on itself. Then out of this folding of space came a face humanoid but it was silver i couldn't really believe it i wasn't expecting anything no preconceptions but i really didn't seem to be expecting a silver being it had a translucent shimmering quality to it though very strange i feel that he was male as he had a strong masculine face he also had long, wavy, blonde hair. Now, I couldn't see the hair, but it was a knowing of the fact that he had this hair. I was a bit shocked at this sight, so I started to try and get a better look. At first, I couldn't see a nose at all, and it was just flat in the space in between his eyes. I think I saw the whole of his face, and I was just shunned at shocked at how it was silver I just couldn't imagine a silver being it didn't make any sense <laughs> really a being that's silver but it had this like translucently shimmering quality to it and so I was just you know how you're just stunned at something and then you just can't really take it all in so then I started to look I was looking at the eyes and I could just look at the space between the eyes and I looked, and it was just sort of flat, I couldn't see a nose. So my gaze followed down his face from that space between his eyes where I was looking. 
And then I saw, eventually, what was actually the end of his nose. It was a very flat looking long nose, which was squared off at the end. Quite bizarre, I thought. At this point, I felt a bit worried with the silver colour and the straight square ended nose. I wondered if he was an android of some sort. I found this disturbing because that would mean that I was not a sentient being. Which actually doesn't really make any sense, but I was struggling to grasp all of this that was happening at the time. So what I was seeing, I realised was me. I was, I, something was showing me me. Or I was showing me me. I felt that this being was showing itself to me, like this was the time. Although it was humanoid, with a silver look and a square nose, you don't, I don't know any, any physical being that has a properly square type nose, it didn't, didn't, I couldn't make head and the tail of it, and I was panicking a bit, I think, about this, and I thought, oh my God, is it an android? Am I an android? Am I some sort of AI, sort of android being? Oh no, it was beginning. I was, that was that was freaking me out a bit. <laughs> anyway, then I looked down a bit further from the end of the nose and saw a mouth. It was in a small round shape, but the jaw was going up and down. So it was, I think that's how I've drawn the picture, but you could probably see it up there to my right there. So. Now I realised that he was talking to me, but I couldn't hear a word, frustratingly. This did, however, make me feel better, as he didn't seem robotic anymore, with a moving jaw and mouth. He didn't seem rigid or metallic, really. It's just that the colour threw me, that shimmering aspect, which was not really solid. You know, it wasn't really solid. Not that an android could not have these things, but perhaps, although I could not hear what he was saying, he was assuring me that he was not an android. And I was getting the message through a more telepathic means. It was at this point our meeting came to a sudden end, and I found myself washing back through this pool-type wormhole back to my body, still sitting up in bed. <laughs>